We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. What is going on, guys? Happy Friday night, or whatever it happens to be in your neck of the woods. Hope you are all doing well. James is asking if I'm OG yet. I've always, you know, OG is just saying that I'm old, man, and yes, I'm old. I get it. I'm old. You don't have to remind me of that. <sighs> Mercer noticed a mistake in my last Jedi review. Ah oh, man. Now I'm going to have to redo the whole thing. <sighs> Great. Uh, what I do wrong, Mercer? What, what, what do you got for me? And uh, Josh wants to know when we're going to get the 24-7 fish stream uh, with me coming on every now and then. I, I don't know. Um... You guys really want to just watch my fish for 24 hours? It doesn't seem like it would be all that exciting. Although I do see there are some channels that seem to live stream all the freaking time. But uh, Was the final score too high? Let's see. They knew where the base was at the beginning because they targeted in the previous movie. I thought I addressed that, but I, and I also... Uh, don't think I gave any points specifically for that, but I'll have to go back and revisit, uh, to take a look. Um, I remember I made the joke about someone dropping the business card, but I don't remember if I gave, did I give any points specifically for that? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because if I didn't give any points for it, it wouldn't make any difference. Uh, but we'll have to take a look. Uh, so Laura's using the technical difficulties gag. Yeah, I saw that on his latest video. He, he not only stole the technical difficulties picture that I use, but he actually played the song that I use as well. I was just like, wow, man. Um, so, yeah. So I threatened to sue him for, uh, for copyright infringement. Uh, so you're saying the score is way too high. How is it way too high? Are you, uh, as far, what, you, you gotta, gotta be more specific, um, Francis, because, I mean, when you say way too high, I mean, the final score for the movie was not very high. I mean, are you just saying it should have been a zero, or are you saying that I actually gave it a bunch of points that I shouldn't have given it? Uh... I saw a guy that uh, made the video and said the game is the worst the Next Generation episode. I don't rem remember that one by title, but there you go. Ed is suggesting that Laura and I should team up more often. We were talking about it, uh, doing something together, because, yeah, it's fun when we do. Okay, friends. I, I just, I, well, and, and the thing is, is that, I mean, I, I know it sounds silly. I put a lot of work into that review, and if I did screw something up, I want to know about it, because I want to make sure as we're moving into our Star Trek First Contact review, which is going to be uh, an equally large undertaking that I want to make sure that I don't make the same mistake twice, basically. So if I if I did screw something up royally, I want to make sure that, that I catch it. Um, so there you go. Uh, just have them pay royalties? Yeah, that's going to happen. <sighs> uh, Sci-Fi says, Dan says, why does Ryan Johnson like to make movies that are uh, bad and so uh, derived that the movies split the fan base? I don't know. <coughs> um, and I don't know if you're referring to this directly, Sci-Fi Sith, uh, but the, I, someone, I can't remember who, I saw a video earlier today where someone uh, dug up some old footage of Ryan Johnson from like 10 years ago saying exactly like that, that he likes for his movies to be divisive. And based on his description from 10 years ago, he was 100% successful. His goal 
uh, based on that video, would have been to make The Last Jedi an incredibly divisive film, and it was. So I guess that was really his plan, which makes it even worse, in my opinion. I mean, if it was just incompetence, then at least I can feel bad for the guy. But if he intentionally wanted to split people down the road, uh, down the middle, as far as whether they liked it or hated it, I don't understand why. That doesn't make any kind of sense whatsoever, except to be a dick, in which case I have no respect for him whatsoever. Riker begin, uh, brings a brainwashing game left, and the only one left is Wesley to try and face uh, force the game on him. I, oh, I vaguely remember that one. I don't, I don't know that I would call that the worst episode, but it was certainly not a great one. Captain George is in the house. How you doing, Captain? Good to see you. And B seventeen O B unit seventeen oh one. Why does lore make live streams that make me want to gouge out my eyes? Um, don't know. Uh, maybe the same reason that Ryan Johnson likes to make movies that are divisive. Maybe he wants you to gouge out your eyes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, honestly, I, you know, lore and I obviously have very different styles, and if watching him irks you, then I would say don't watch his live streams. If you like his regular videos, then watch those. But if you don't like his live stream style, uh, which I'll be honest with you, I've watched a few of his live streams and uh, usually I'll listen to it in the background, but like sometimes it's a little weird for my taste, like with the whole thing with the guy that he has pop up stripping and talking about how hot lore is. That's just kind of weird, but that's lore. That's not me. So Hey, if, if it works for him, awesome. Uh, Teutonic Knight 92 says, anti Trigger, after Wrath of Khan, I think First Contact is my favorite Star Trek movie. Not saying the second best, just my second favorite. Um, well, and that's an interesting distinction because, yeah, it doesn't have to be the best to be something you enjoy because enjoyment is completely subjective. And in that case, let me apologize in advance because I am not going to hold back just because I know a lot of people like that movie. So, uh, but I would not be me if I went soft on it just because it's a fan favorite. And, and so I'm not going to, there are some problems with that movie and I'm going to be delving into those problems. Yes. You are old for an Oregonian since you watched, uh, the universe startup. You don't look it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the, the first episode of Portlandia mentions that uh, Portland, Oregon is a place where 20-year-olds go to retire, and that is 100% true. Which Looper movies, watch Looper movies, make no sense? I think what you mean is watch Looper, the movie makes no sense. Um, in what way, Whiskey? I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't hate Looper. It's not my favorite, but I mean, it's a paradox film at the end because of what happens, but... The, it's, I don't think it's a horrible movie. Dumbest Humans in Sci-Fi, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Um, I would say that the people in Alien Covenant were dumber than the people in Prometheus. Uh, by a pretty significant amount. amount. Uh, Laughable Larry, Anti-Trekker, you were wrong about hyperspace being like Borg conduits. Whoop. And then, of course, the chat scrolls on by. Let me see. Uh, if that was the case, Haldo wouldn't have been able to ram into another ship. Well, that's a whole other problem, uh, laughable. And I think that it, as far as trying to come up with an explanation for it, first of all, Ryan Johnson is an idiot. But besides that, what you could argue is that in the, in the, the way that the tech works with a hyperdrive is the, uh, what creates the opening that lets you get into the conduit is in fact uh, is also something that accelerates the ship to light speed which is why they say hyperspace and light speed synonymously uh, because that would actually allow a for you to say light speed and mean hyperspace and b still be consistent with the whole hyperspace conduits thing and c allow you to have physical contact with the other ship uh, let's see. Terrible. Captain George says, anti trekker my internet company is taking a dump on me. Uh, the best I can currently get is 240p for live streams. Wow, that sucks. Yeah, I don't know who your internet company is, but you might want to see if there's anybody else available in your area. Um, uh, mostly just the face shots. One of his, once his, uh, one of the streams opened up with a, cl uh, close-up. I see why you call him the Rancor Keeper. <laughs> I don't know. I, 
See, when I first started doing live streams, I just had my turd up on the screen, but people complained. And so, uh, frankly, I, I'm not into putting my face on the screen, but I'm only here because some of you guys insisted. Uh, Kaplach, good to see you, Austin. Uh, Mercer says the guy uh, said that the crew was acting out of character. Also, Jordy was b uh, blind and the game should not affect him. Uh, that's true. That's true. I didn't think about that. Someone says, hey there, fellow anti-trekkers. Good to see you, someone. Uh, have you heard the rumors saying that Kathleen Kennedy might be leaving Lucasfilm in September? I have, but at this point, I'm just treating it as rumors. Uh, as, as far as I know, there's nothing substantial to it. So if she leaves, awesome. But they need to get somebody in charge that understands and respects Star Wars. They absolutely have to do that. Um, happy Friday, everyone, says a Jedi, and happy Friday to you, too. Lobster Eleven is also in the house. Good to see you. Josh Street says, Star Trek V is my favorite Star Trek movie to watch uh, when I'm drunk. It's easy to follow when wasted. <laughs> um, and Jay Wig says, Hyper Rams only work with space gas fuel injected carburetors. Well, there you go. And so, uh, there we go. I love the way they did Cochrane in First Contact. I, I'm mixed on Cochrane as a character. Uh, it seems inconsistent with the Cochrane we meet in the original series, but overall I didn't have a problem with it. Um, uh, good morning, Admiral. Good to see you. Austin asks, didn't the ship in Futuron become sentient for one episode? Yes, the computer and Bender had a fling for a little while. Uh, Ed Star, favorite old Star Trek episode, Doomsday Machine, that is definitely up there for me i mean i i keep going back and forth between doomsday machine and balance of terror as being my absolute favorite uh sci-fi sis says anti trick i hope all the rumors saying that kathleen kennedy might be leaving lucasfilm in september uh come true because i want this far left politics out of star wars at least toned down i agree uh and the thing is it's not that they the you can put politics even a left-wing political agenda into a film as long as you do it in a subtle enough way to where it doesn't interfere with the story but when they when they put it out there in such a way as to actually pull you out of the movie that's just really bad hey 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 it is 4 a.m can't sleep let's chat good to see you aaron so since it's 4 a.m for you i'm gonna assume that you are on the other side of the pond from me so uh what country are you in um, and, uh, is Ocean's 8 review a go or no go? I, I don't know. I'm, I don't want to see it, but I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think I should see it? I know I asked the chat earlier today and a few people said yes. Um, but it wasn't like overwhelming. Um, and the Planet Ship, uh, Express was voiced by Sigourney Weaver. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Mariana Hill from Dagger of the Mind is the hottest Star Trek character. Well, Mercer, then you should have nominated her. But you didn't, did you? Scotland, baby, you know this. I'm sorry, Aaron. You know what? I, I, sorry. I know I got a lot of people, about half of my subscribers are from outside of the country. And I, you know, I, I can't keep a list. I apologize. Uh, because yes, you, as you probably know, because I probably said it to you before, because I know I've said it to a couple of people before, Scotland is definitely on my bucket list because my family is from there originally. Uh, Admiral says, do it. Uh, someone says, why, at Wise Gamora, uh, an all-female Ocean's Love sequel. Kind of remember the all-female Ghostbusters being horrible. I'll, I'll go see, uh, Hereditary said this weekend. Yeah, I... I, I don't know, you know, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Why would you review Ocean say it's not sci-fi? That's why I'm kind of mixed on it. I mean, on the one hand, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk about the political crap. On the other hand, yeah, it doesn't really fit the theme of my channel. So I, it's not like I would ever do a full review of it on this channel. And I don't know. I, I just, it just doesn't look like a good movie. Uh, Anthony Dukes is in the house. Good to see you. Never fear, Trist 1982 is here. And Micah is here as well so that he can uh, try to insult me and say how Laura Reloaded is better. And he says, is, is it just me or did Laura use the technical difficulty screen uh, the best? How, he, he stole it from me, Micah. He, he literally stole it from me. He copied it directly from my video because he didn't have that song. 
And he certainly didn't have that image. So, no. Josh Reed says, Andy Tucker, if the Doomsday Machine wasn't stopped, do you think the Federation Klingons and Romulans would put aside their differences to stop it? Probably not. Um, I think because keep in mind the Doomsday Machine was on a straight path, and we know from the novel Vendetta where it was going, but I don't think, you know, I think while it was in Federation space, the Klingons would just be laughing at the Federation about it. Um, uh, Andre says, good evening, all good evening, my friend. B unit 1701, just you, just, just me. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, just you to Mike. Oh, I see you're responding to Micah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, Micah seems to think that Lore Reloaded stealing my material uh, and putting it in his video is incredibly clever for reasons. Uh, if Palpatine defeated the rebels and killed Skywalker, what do you think he would have done with the Empire afterward? What was the role for Palpatine during this time, a time of peace? Well, remember the Sith concept that, that what they ultimately want is order and they would have it. And also keep in mind that he would be doing exactly what they did in between episodes three and four. There, there's a long period of time there where the Empire was in complete and total control. You broke your little ships. Yes, that is coming. Um, here's one for you. Major Kira turning the other cheek and teaching the Cardassians how to form a resistance movement against the Dominion. Thoughts? Uh, wouldn't you be the bigger per would you would you be the bigger person too? It'd be very difficult, but I mean that would be the right thing to do. Ozzy says, Anti Trekker, are you a Halloween movie fan? The new trailer just dropped. In fact, I found out about the trailer when I was doing the live stream this afternoon and we watched it live on the show. And I I I think it looks awesome. I can't wait. Uh, and this is an example, by the way, of how to do a strong female character, to have Lori Strode uh, despite the fact that now she's 60 and, uh, you know, it's 40 years later, but she is ready for, for taking on Michael and it looks like she is ready. And I'm, I'm excited. Send a copyright strike to Lord for stealing your technical difficulties. Like, I can, yeah, that would be funny. Oh yeah. Hit the like button. Why would you hit the like button, Micah? Since you hate me so much. I don't understand. You seem like you're, you're like bipolar or something. Uh, I hope female Scotty is a redhead. Female Scotty. Uh, go see Solo again and do a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown of the entire movie. Don't forget your notepad. I am not going to go see it in theaters again. What I'm going to do is the same thing I did with The Last Jedi, is that as soon as Solo comes out on the home video market, I will, in fact, purchase it, and then I will do a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown because I like to show clips and images in my reviews, and I will not do so until I can legally own it. Um, I know that some people have already done it. Like, uh, I know, um, Mahler did a, a review showing clips and stuff that he obviously got from some downloaded version, but I am not going to, I'm not going to touch that. Uh, I'm not going to break the law. Uh, I have too much of a respect for the law to do that. And so I will wait till I can buy it. Then I will do it. Anti-tracker that, uh, is that a movie cup you have there or just a regular cup? Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a movie cup for, uh, Civil War when I saw Civil War in theaters. Uh, female, black, transgendered, handicapped, bisexual, Kirk, SJW edition. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's probably coming. Um, uh, the Sith want order and above all more power no matter what cost. Well, and that's exactly what the Emperor had. It's just that the rise of Luke Skywalker got in the way. Um, uh, in first contact, when Picard goes uh, into range uh, and smashes the models of the old Enterprises, Lily says that to him. Yes. Uh, oh, you're answering B unit. Never mind. Uh, Jamie Curtis still kicks ass. Oh, I agree. It looks really good. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And like I said, this is how you do a strong female character. You don't make, you know, it does. I don't think that they're going to make her into a Mary Sue. They're going to, you know, have her ready but i don't think that she's going to you know physically overpower michael myers or anything um it is just a starfleet has every confidence uh with the enterprise oh it's just that they they say that starfleet has every confidence with the enterprise and her crew they're just not so sure about her captain i hate that line and i will get into that in the coming weeks um 
Didn't the Sith go after the Black Sun? Uh, if you're talking about EU stuff, I would not know. Uh, whatever says the t-shirt. Yes, that is true. Whatever. Uh, I guess I'll turn myself into the cops. Not sure what that was for, but there you go. Let me see what that text message was about. Oh, that was the wife. All right, and the Imperial Senate, even during this time, was considered a joke. Palpatine, uh, Masamata, and the military ran the government. Yes, um, but the Sith do crave order. That is a common theme for the Sith all the way through the Star Wars saga. And so they had it for a brief time, and I think Palpatine would be perfectly content to simply rule the galaxy and keep it in order. But unfortunately, the, those annoying rebels uh, kept disrupting his order and kind of ticked him off a bit. Uh, I also heard we'll see Spock in Season 2 of Discovery as an adult. Apparently, Zachary Quinto is playing him. Those are just rumors. I... Uh, not a fan of the idea, to be honest with you. Uh, I really am not... Enderman is in the house. How you doing, Enderman? Good to see you. Um, E3 is on Sunday, is it? I did not realize that. Uh, assume the gender of Neil Armstrong of criminal offense. Yes, you should never assume the uh, gender of anybody. Did Battlefield Earth ruin John Travolta's career? I don't think so. Um, but let's take a look. Um, because... I think he's done some, uh, but I, I could be wrong, but I think he's done some work since Battlefield Earth, some significant work. Uh, let me wait for, uh, let's see. All right, so. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff. Okay, so Battlefield Earth was in 2000. After that, he did a bunch of stuff, including Swordfish, he was in Austin Powers, he was in The Punisher, uh, he was in Lonely Hearts, Hairspray, Taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3, uh, yeah, he, he didn't ruin his career, he's still busy, and he's got like four things in production right now, so there you go. And BUnit 1701 throws a couple of bucks into the chat. Thank you so much, my friend. I truly do appreciate it. It says, let's get this party started with number 10. You got it. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Lore Reloaded. I am The Lore Reloaded, your wondrous host. What the f***? <laughs> You're so smoke. bad that when you come on screen, people don't drink. They punch themselves in the dick for five straight minutes. <laughs> there you go. And uh, Battlefield Earth was stupid. The camera angles made me not. Yeah, it was a bad movie. Um, that was a really, really bad movie. Um, and let's see. Me uh, remember the Tarkin book? After the Rebels' defeat, I could see Palpatine returning the Sith Temple underneath the Jedi Temple, meditate more on the dark side, discover immortality. Yeah, I I'm sure he would have done stuff like that had the Rebellion uh, not ruined his day. Uh and Anthony says, Enderman, I'm going to put out a pic of the Enterprise D blushing on Discord. <laughs> okay. Uh, GWD86 says, Palpatine was afraid of Vader not dying. He thought Vader was done, useless cripple, and he uses hatred, pain, and suffering to become stronger in the Force uh, than Palpatine imagined. Yeah, I, well, and notice that Palpatine was completely willing to throw Vader under the bus so that he could get Luke as an apprentice, much like he did to Dooku to get Anakin. But did not work out for him, did it? Um, and Mercer Create throws a couple of bucks into the chat. Thank you so much, my friend. Favorite and most talented actor in the Kelvin timeline. Oh, goodness. I'm having a brain cramp, uh, even though I can see him in my head. But hold on. I'm, you know, IMDB knows all. Let me bring that up. Uh, and don't forget to pick a number there, Mercer, uh, while I'm bringing this up. Because I feel like an idiot for not remembering this guy's name. Because I've seen him in about 100,000 different things. Bruce Greenwood. That's what it is. Uh, really like Bruce Greenwood as Pike. And I really like Carl Urban as Dr. McCoy. I, I would have to say that it's a toss-up between those two. Um, 
I really like Captain Pike, and uh, I was disappointed that they killed him in, in the second one. Um, uh, Russell says he found Battlefield Earth inspirational. I, too, can learn to fly a Harrier in a couple of days. Uh, you're, you're creepy, man. Mercer Creed wants number four. You got it. Yeah, Bruce Greenwood was really, actually, he, he was a great, smarmy executive in iRobot Mercer, yes. Uh, I really like Bruce Greenwood. He's a great actor. Uh, him and Carl Urban really are a step above the, the entire rest of the cast. I mean, not that Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto and the rest are bad. It's just that Bruce and Carl are just on, a, on another level. Uh, have you seen who they cast as Pike in Discovery? He looks exactly like the old actor. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, I, I, I haven't seen him in makeup or anything, so may, I don't know if they've shown pictures of him, uh, in makeup, but let me see if I can find anything on it. Uh, let's see. No, nah, it doesn't look like I can, I don't see anything on a quick search. I don't want to waste much time on it, but I don't think he looks exactly like him, uh, like Jeffrey Hunter, but... Um, neither does Bruce Greenwood. I don't care about that. What I care about is, is, is the character going to be well executed? I mean, as it is, look at the ships, look at the Klingons. Do they really care about whether or not it looks anything like the original? Uh, the Jedi and Sith are mortal enemies of each other and would always fight each other and, and interfere with each other's interests. Yes, but the Jedi supposedly were wiped out. Uh, so if that, if, if they had been successful with that, the Sith would have been in complete control for the foreseeable future. Um, uh, nothing but respect for Carl Urban. He had to work, uh, was not typical uh, typecast to not be a typecast after Lord of the Rings. Well, and Carl Urban has a great diverse body of work and I, yeah, I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, I've talked about it a couple of times when I met him at a comic con and just a really nice guy too. So there you go. Um, would I ever go on a Star Trek cruise? Sadly, Wesley goes. Um, pro honestly, probably not. That just seems like such a money sink to me. Um, Carl Urban had the mannerisms perfected for Bones. Oh yeah, he absolutely, and here's the funny thing. He wasn't imitating DeForest Kelly, but he was Dr. McCoy. And, th which was, yeah, he, he's great as Dr. McCoy. Um, the, uh, the Jedi says, uh, yeah, that... Did that just pop up twice? Yeah, for some reason, Sci-Fi Sith, your comment duplicated, but hey, whatever. Uh, let's see. Would you be willing to do, uh, willing to show a brilliant three-minute YouTube video that is a tribute to Mark Hamill and his slam against Ryan Johnson? Um, well, would I be willing to show such a video? I would be willing to do a video about that, but I'm not going to put somebody else's video on there, but I'd be more than happy to put the link or something on my channel for it. Uh, he... He was Black Bolt in the oh so wonderful Inhuman series. Yeah, well that went nowhere. <laughs> uh, Enderman, oh my God, the Enterprise D is blushing. It's freaking adorable. Well, there you go. Well, it looks like Enderman is happy. Good job. Um, so let's see here. Anti Trucker, I got you. Check your Discord. I, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I will check it out. If I can get the stupid thing up. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's not... I wouldn't say he looks exactly like him, but he looks similar enough. Um, but, you know, quite frankly to most people, Bruce Greenwood is Christopher Pike. Um, and so I'll show you guys the picture that uh, Captain George sent me. So, I mean... I don't know. I mean, they, they have some similar features, but some not so... Like, they have very different noses. Um, but, you know... I, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to it. Like I said, I'm not all that concerned with how the character looks as much as um, what the... Uh, what am I thinking? Uh, what 
the uh, the character is written like what we get out of it, and that's that's really what I want is a good character. Uh, check out my crazy house to see it. Oh, the picture. Let's see if I can find it. Where's Enderman's crazy house? I do love that name. Let's see. There's Enderman and Doom's crazy house. And <laughs> so yeah, uh, so the picture they're talking about is this. This is the Enterprise blushing. There we go. Uh, let's see. The Sith and Jedi wiped each other out on several occasions, but they always return. Those show that an idea can't so be so easily destroyed. Well. But the problem is, is that they require training. It's not like you just magically... Well, according to Ryan Johnson, I guess you do just magically become a Jedi now. So, never mind. They actually had talks about bringing back Greenwood. They decided against it. Well, I think that was a mistake. Um, but not that it matters. I mean, and that's the thing. It's like, I know that there have been a lot of rumors about Zachary Quinto playing Spock. That... Zachary Quinto is older than he was when he first appeared as Spock, so whatever. If Palpatine di uh, dead and Vader turned back to the light, are there any Sith left after Return of the Jedi? Technically, no. However, they also never say that uh, Snoke is a Sith, so the Sith may just be gone. Um... Anti-Trekker, Jedi or Sith orders philosophy-wise? As far as which do I think has a better philosophy? Um, I would probably go with Jedi over Sith. Um, yeah. Maul was alive. Yeah, but we know Maul is going to die in the in Star Wars Rebels. So that's that's nothing. Maul will be dead. And, and and my understanding is that according to some people, and I'm not into the EU stuff and Rebels and, and Clone Wars and stuff, but my understanding is Maul is not really a Sith anymore. Whatever. Um, there's not an indication that Snoke or Kylo Ren were Sith, specifically just start side users. Yes, exactly. There's no evidence that the Sith still exist. Uh, even though that's new can. Not sure what you're talking about. Um... Enderman says, help me make things... I'm doing more public. Every, any, everyone and anyone can make a ship. OC just uh, need to uh, reach the criteria for my crazy house pin message. Um, okay. Well, there you go. Go to, go to Enderman's crazy house. Have fun. Because that's why we gave Enderman a crazy house. How do you get to the Enderman of Doom crazy house? Very simple. Follow the link below to my Discord page and look for Enderman of Doom's crazy house. Uh, where Enderman of Doom is the king of the castle, because it is his crazy house. Um, did you like Voss curved energy blades in Solo? I thought they were kind of cool. Um, I, I didn't have a problem with the blades themselves. I had plenty of problems with the movie, but no, the blades I thought were kind of cool. Not very practical, I mean, but well, I, obviously what they were doing is tr just trying to avoid a lightsaber. Because reasons. Um, uh, Jay Wiggs, uh, did you mean the island of crime? You know, that sounds a lot better than what I originally meant. I'm not sure what you guys are talking about. Mike muted. Mike muted? No, it's odd, is it? Hello, hello. No, I can still hear it. Don't, don't freak me out like that, because my mic does die from time to time. If you were forced between the two extreme ideologies, Jedi or Sith, which would I choose? Well, I think I already said Jedi. If I had to pick one to to go by, I would pick Jedi over Sith. They're not malevolent. Um, and the only reason I would go with the Sith and other uh, the only real reason between the only real difference between the Sith and other Dark Siders is the rule of two. Well, and the Sith do have a philosophy. They are, you know, but we don't know what Snoke was, and we never will know. Yay! <sighs> Enderman uh, says, anti trekker I already have the USS Stark, Oberth class, a rebellious petite ship who likes danger, and the USS Killy Sovereign class, a proud but jealous type. <laughs> okay, my friend. 
You got some weird stuff there, I'm not going to lie, but hey, um, that's all right. Uh, super chat animation of Enderman uh, making out with the D. No, that is not going to happen. Sorry. And the next super chat, by the way, uh, the next super chat animation that I'm currently working on is to uh, convert Lore Reloaded into a pack lid. That's going to be a lot of fun. The dark side is fun and has cookies. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Um, Star Wars, I assume you mean Star Wars, a little too black and white, dark side or Jedi, is there a gray side? Um, depending on the EU stuff, there is, although I think that the black and white thing is good. It's, it's a mythological storytelling. It's not meant to be gritty and dark like the real world. It's, it's supposed to be black and white. Um, if you don't like that, watch Battlestar Galactica and stuff like that if you want gray scale moral amb ambigu ambigu man i can't pronounce anything today you know what i'm saying if you want moral gray areas star wars should not be it but if you like star wars to have no morality hey the last jedi is for you uh let's see jj seems to think that he can fix everything in nine i doubt he even knows where to start with that train wreck yeah i don't know i don't know what he's gonna do i genuinely have no clue Light side has the blue, but uh, blue make, but no cookies. Well, or the blue milk, but no cookies. Yeah. Well, they have blue milk and green milk, so you know they they have quite a lot of milk variety. For me, I would choose the Sith Order because they've uh, got things done and pragmatic. Um, well, the Jedi are not a, their, their goal is not taking over and controlling things. So the Jedi got some things done. It's just that we, in the Star Wars sagas, we know it. We saw the Jedi as they were falling apart. We didn't see them rise to power and help maintain peace in the galaxy and that kind of thing. Uh, one master, one apprentice. Uh, when you're ready to claim the mantle of the Dark Lord, you only must uh, do so by eliminating me. Yeah, that's kind of... That's kind of a messed up system, honestly. Are there any gray Jedi in canon? I believe that it's mentioned in, I don't know if it's Rebels or uh, Clone Wars, but I, and some of you guys that are into that stuff, you can probably tell, uh, throw that in there. Um, Ozzy says, the reimagined BSG is pretty awesome. I haven't watched The Last Jedi or Solo, mostly because of the ridiculous reviews it was getting. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you want morality to be more gray, that's really what Ryan Johnson was ultimately trying to do is take morality out of Star Wars. I did not like it. Uh, I think that it sucks without the moral black and white. But if, if you're into that, you may actually enjoy it. So I would say check it out. I choose the Sith 2 because intercourse. <laughs> actually, there's nothing that says that a Jedi can't have sex, only that they can't get married. Uh, they can't form attachments. Um, uh, Captain George says, I sent you a picture of both Jedi and Sith Code on Discord. Now, yeah, I've seen this image before, but I will bring it up for people to see. Um, now, I don't know, is this, is this, uh, canonized somewhere on, uh, in the Clone Wars or something, or is this just something that somebody wrote? But there you go. Uh, peace is a lie. There's only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The force shall free me. Uh, as for the Jedi, there is no emotion. There is peace. There is no uh, ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the force. Now, both of these sound stupid to me, I'll be honest with you. And they don't sound like what we see in the films. Um, so... I, I don't see, you know, because if you look at these mantras, like with the Sith, I don't see the Sith struggling to break the bonds of slavery or to be freed by the Force. Uh, and at the same time, uh, I think that the idea that, you know, there is no passion, there is no chaos, there is no death, that's just, those are just stupid statements because they're all patently false. And so, but I don't know. Um... So, anti dragger each the other codes. Yeah. Uh, it's EU, yeah. Um, but, I mean, eh, whoop, I think, no, the microphone's still there. I thought it went out for a second. 
trying to keep an ear out for the microphone because it's been so wonky lately. I heard Qui-Gon Jinn was considered a great Jedi, except the term and concept didn't exist at the time. Well, I still, I'm opposed to the very concept of a great Jedi. I am absolutely opposed to it because the whole point of Star Wars is that you do or you do not. You are Jedi or you are Sith. You are good or you are evil. If you want gray area in your science fiction, honestly, I think you should look other places than Star Wars. When you try to, when you try to corrupt the morality of Star Wars, you end up with The Last Jedi. Now, some of you guys might think The Last Jedi was an awesome movie, and if you do, great, but that's not what obviously a lot of the fans like. Um, Grey Jedi are still light side force users, they just aren't members of the Jedi Order. Any light sider who doesn't follow Jedi orthodoxy is a Grey Jedi. Then they wouldn't be Grey, they're just light. A gray Jedi implies that they are neither light nor dark, that they are in between. Um, it's funny, Anthony uh, Dooku is sort of gray. I misread that with my dyslexia. I, I thought gray was something else, and I was about to say shame on you, but there you go. Um, uh, we need an animation of Lore saying Star Trek. <laughs> Uh, Star Trek Discovery Enterprise is a thousand meters long. Is it really? Give me a break. So it's a kilometer, huh? Uh, Star Wars is black and white. Yeah, it absolutely should be, in my opinion. And I, I don't think that that, that that moral ambiguity is healthy for Star Wars. It's healthy for other franchises, but not Star Wars. So Star Wars is supposed to be a classic mythological tale. That was the whole point of of George Lucas's saga was to take the monomyth and turn it into science fiction. And he did it beautifully. But, and so to ruin that, I think is a big mistake. Uh, if you don't want it gray, then don't watch rebels. Um, uh, yeah, I, I've heard about the Ben do the, uh, I, I've seen people do videos about that and yeah, I, I'll watch rebels eventually, but I'm not excited about that idea. Ray has got to be a gray Jedi. No, I think Ray is a, is a Sith user. She's dark side. She is absolutely dark side based on her behavior, except that Ryan Johnson doesn't understand morality. So there we go. Uh, I think Knights of the Old Republic did gray Jedis pretty well. Well, that's a video game. That's a little different. Uh, is the light side Sith a contradiction? Well, you would think so. But, you know, I'm sure that, I'm sure that someone has done it at some point in a book or a fanfic or something. Uh, isn't Sith or Jedi is cre uh, creature born as a counterbalance to both? Well, uh, see, the thing is, is that, and, and this is where we get into a problem. Like, people try to try dark Jedi or light Sith because they like the idea of the unleashed passions of the Sith and stuff, but they want to be the good guy. Sorry, doesn't work that way. As Yoda himself was talking about, is that these emotions that you have to use to use the dark side of the Force are a path to evil. They are, they lead you to evil. So they are evil. You are not a light, evil person. And you are not an evil, good person. You're either good or you're evil. And yes, good is boring. That's just the way it is. Sorry. What do you think of the Lord of the Rings TV show coming out? For or against? It's supposedly going to have a young Aragorn. Ah, uh, going into it with an open mind, but it's not something that I'm like excited about. I don't think it's no, uh, necessary. Ray is omniforce oriented. No, Ray is a Sith. I'm sorry. Look at the way she behaves. She is a freaking Sith. Yes, Austin just said she's all about emotion and passion. She is absolutely a Sith. Um, why does JJ make all sci-fi things ginormous? Because that's just JJ. That's his style. Um, uh, no, really, Google Vapad if you want to read on it. I, I'm not sure what you were talking about there. Evil will always try because I am assuming good there. Good is dumb. Yes, some good old space balls quoting. Even if they swap sides and bring Snoke and Luke back, it'll be... Oh, yeah, I, I, well, I don't know if I would say stupid. The problem is, is that I think JJ, you know, Ryan Johnson really painted JJ into a corner. It's going to be very difficult 
for them to to do anything good with what they what he's left with to work with. So maybe he can pull it out. I don't know. I hate Star Wars Rebels with such a passion. It's too cheesy and kid friendly for my taste. Well, I haven't seen it, so I can't really give much of an opinion. And nine, Ray will start shooting lightning. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Batman v Superman or Civil War? If you mean like which is the better movie, uh, Civil War clearly. But I did like Batman versus Superman more than most. <coughs> um, Super Eight or Goonies? Uh, I haven't seen Goonies, believe it or not. <coughs> I recently got the DVD, but I haven't watched it yet. Uh, Anthony Dukes throws a couple of bucks in the super chat. Thank you so much, Anthony. It says Episode Nine: Galaxy Killer Base. Stop it! I don't want another super weapon, please. But there we go. Uh, which means, of course, Anthony, you get to pick one, so let me know. Uh, Vapad, or however you say it, is Mace Windows custom lightsaber style. I, I will tell you, and this is I know some of you guys are going to think I'm being blasphemous, but policy number one on this channel is I tell you what I think, nothing more, nothing less. I don't give a crap about the lightsaber styles. I care about, is it, it you know, is it well done? <laughs> Josh says I'm a traitor for liking Batman v Superman. Hey, sorry. It's not that bad a movie. I know a lot of people like to hate on it, but it's really not that bad a movie. Um, Ozzy liked uh, Batman v Superman except for Superman dying uh, and how they brought him back in the next movie was just terrible. I would agree with you. Too. There's a few things. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Batman v Superman was an awesome, great, best movie ever kind of situation. I'm just saying it wasn't bad. And there's a big difference between the two. Uh, if I was giving it a quick score, I'd probably give it about a seven, seven and a half out of 10. Um, there was a few things I would absolutely change about it. Number one, they used two iconic storylines that they should not have used that early in the DCU. Uh, they should not have used the Dark Knight Returns and they should not have used the, the death of Superman for Batman v Superman. Um, you could write a Batman v Superman story that didn't feature those two things. And then... You don't kill Superman, and instead you have them, you know, see that they're on the same side by the end of the film somehow. Um, and um, but then you then later on down the road you can do a Death of Superman film, and way later down the road you can do the Dark Knight films. But unfortunately, DC, to, you know, or Warner Brothers, I should say doesn't understand the properties that they own and so we ended up with them just saying hey these are the two most popular stories let's throw them in a movie it'll make a billion dollars uh, mr Miles says batman v superman's worst movie i've seen in a long time i'm sorry but there are a lot worse movies than batman and superman that have come out in the last couple of years for example the last jedi uh. um you know, and the Martha thing, I actually didn't mind the Martha thing. Um, the only thing I didn't like about the Martha scene was that I didn't believe that Clark would refer to his mother as Martha. Um, however, I didn't mind the whole Martha thing because it's funny because I've read Batman and Superman comics for a very long time. And it never clicked in my mind that both of them have a mother named Martha, which is true from the comic books. They didn't make that up or anything. Um... Opinion of Temple of Doom, I find it quite enjoyable after you fast forward through the first 20 minutes of the George Lucas. <laughs> um, I, I, Temple of Doom, I think, is the second weakest Indiana Jones movie. The only one worse than it is Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But I like Last Crusade and the first one better. I know some people like Temple of Doom a lot. I'm not one of them. Uh, I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was great. Um... Anderman says, anti tracker there's a Star Trek versus Superman video. Superman versus the Enterprise D. Superman lost because the crew froze him and threw him to Earth. That makes no sense whatsoever. Superman would simply wreck the Enterprise D. I mean, I'm sorry, he could rip the hull in two with his bare hands. That doesn't make any kind of sense. And I don't think phasers or torpedoes would do much against the Man of Steel. Uh, Last Jedi was definitely worse than Batman v Superman. Um... I'd rather watch Discovery than Batman vs. Superman. Oh, shame on you, Mr. Miles. 
uh, Discovery was way worse than Batman v Superman. Uh, Jayway says, Wonder Woman was horrible. I couldn't watch Beyond the Wright Brothers plane dropping the atomic bomb and flying across the Atlantic. I didn't hate Wonder Woman. Um, I thought it was good, but I think it was a little overrated. Uh, I think that, you know, because it's just honestly just a uh, almost exact same story as Captain America. They just changed up a few things here and there. Uh, Superman also punched Jordy LaForge in the face and he survived. That makes no sense whatsoever, Enderman. That really doesn't, yeah, if any human being took a punch from Superman, assuming Superman was actually meant it, uh, they would be dead. Or at the very least, unconscious. Uh, did you see the tweet I sent you about Indiana Jones and Star Wars? I have not. I apologize. I haven't been completely up to date on my Twitter, so I am truly sorry there, Thomas. Um, do you think Disney would do, uh, would have the guts to decanonize Force Awakens and the Last Jedi? No, I do not. Um... One in the chat, if Last Jedi was worse. Two, if Batman v Superman is worse. All right, so he wants to take a vote. So far, I'm only seeing a couple of ones. Uh, we'll see if anybody else wants to say that. Uh, uh, go with you, but I yeah, I don't think anybody's going to say that Batman v Superman was worse than the Last Jedi. Come on now. Yeah, it, it looks like uh, Whiskey and Comics is on your side, but it looks like pretty much... Uh, oh, and there, Thoris also seems to think Batman v Superman was worse. Uh, but pretty much everyone else is saying that The Last Jedi is worse. There you go. Um, I, think it's, I think that issue is pretty well settled. Um, so, John Ford says, one... <laughs> <laughs> Jedi says abstain. Uh, yeah, so even DC is drinking the star, the SJW uh, Kool Aid. Well, that's the problem. Hollywood as a whole is drinking the SJW Kool Aid right now, and I'm really done with it. Um, you know, if you look at a lot of the movies that are coming right now, uh, Enderman I do says, I know, but he also punched Picard in the face too. I almost uh, farted the the ship. And almost farted the ship crew to death. Not sure what that means, Enderman, but okay. <laughs> Sci-Fi Sith Dance says, Vampit is based on the form uh, 5, 6, 7. Juro, Vampit's lightsaber form to draw passion from inside a person. Yeah, I get that, but I don't care. It's not canon. It's not in the movies. That's something people made up because they wanted it to seem like there's something special about Mace Windu. Sorry, but that's all it is. Mace Windu, is, you know, when they, whoop, yeah, when they, when they do the lightsaber fighting in the movies, guess what? They don't care about those styles. The styles were all invented based on the fights. Sorry. Not that I, not, don't get me wrong. If you're into that stuff, that's cool. But per, for me personally, I don't care. Uh, I don't read the EU stuff. Um, and I'm not into the Jedi mythos that deep. I love Star Wars, but that's as far as I take it. I mean, heck. I love Star Wars, all right? I got, I got this bad boy right here by my desk. It's not that I, I don't like it. It's just that, uh, I don't care. And no, if it's in the book, at best you could call that beta canon. It is, you know, if it's not on film, it is not canon. And I'm sorry, you can argue about that all day long, but it doesn't matter. The average person that sees these movies and enjoys these movies is not going to read the books. And so you can throw all sorts of cool stuff in the book. It's just like people try to try to argue that The Last Jedi was better because there's stuff that's in the book that explains away certain things. Well, if it's in the book and you have to read the book, sorry, that's still a fault for the movie. And uh, if... Uh, so, it was canonized in Star Wars, absolutely everything you need to know. Okay, well, that's... Uh, so, you're telling me that anybody that should... So everybody that watches Star Wars should know about that fighting style. And yeah, it's in the games. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the fighting styles. But... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Miles, guys, don't argue with Andy Trick. He's right and you're wrong. It always ends up. No, but here's the thing. I'm not saying 
that caring about the fighting styles is there's anything wrong with it. If you guys love the fighting styles, that's awesome. For me, it means nothing to me. It doesn't add anything to the movies to me. There's nothing in the movies that indicates that Mace Windu is drawing on the dark side. There's nothing that shows in the movies except that he has a scowl on his face, but it's freaking Samuel L. Jackson. He always has a scowl on his face. Um, there's nothing there that lets me that shows me that he is doing something any differently than anybody else. Um, and so uh, I'm not sure where they're going to... Uh, I thought the original story, well, uh, yeah, the samurai is, uh, and I know they say samurai is not a, a fighting style. No, it's Bush, uh, Bushido, but the, uh, but yeah, the, the, uh, the concept of the lightsaber was to be a space laser sword, samurai sword type of weapon. And of course, in the original trilogy, they didn't go into a lot of, uh, care and, and crafting with the choreography. It wasn't until the prequels that they really got some martial artists involved and stuff in the choreography of the fights. But the uh, but even so, you know, and, and all the fights were crafted before any of these styles were created. All these styles that we talk about, the various fighting styles of Star Wars, were created based on what is in the movies. The movies were not based on the fighting styles. Um, thank you. I, I apologize, Lobster. You're right. Uh, the Kenjitsu. Uh, Bushido is the, is the lifestyle. I, I got that mixed up. I apologize. But the, um, but the, uh, the, the point is, is that the fighting styles, yeah, it's kind of a fun thing. And yeah, for video games and stuff like that, that's awesome. But as far as the movies are concerned, they're meaningless. There was no such thing as the, uh, however you say it, the Vest Vapen, I'm sorry. I know I'm, I, I'm not trying to be ignorant. I just, I can't remember what it was. Uh, but there, that fighting style did not exist until somebody came up with it after the movie was made. Some of that stuff about Mace is in the new comics, which is supposedly can. Well, and that's the thing. It's like with canonization, I personally, you know, there's, um, you know, I, and I understand a lot of people are fans of the EU stuff too. Now, being dyslexic, the books are kind of not that much of an option for me. I cannot effectively read for pleasure. I can I will never be a well-read person, which I, I regret. I wish I could. Um, and so I can't get into that stuff like most of you can. And, you know, yes, I can listen to the occasional book on tape and stuff like that, but that takes a lot of time and book on tape or can be expensive and all that. And I don't have a lot of time or the money to, to purchase them. But so for me, the movies are my primary source of, uh, of, entertainment as far as any of these franchises so if it's not in the movie then it's you know quite frankly irrelevant you know i'm not going to sit there and research uh various fighting styles so that i can figure out if mace windu is pulling power from the dark side i'm going to look at the movie and see that mace windu is a jedi knight and that there's no line at all in any film that says that he uses the dark side of the force. And, you know, and, and the thing is, is that like, well, unfortunately, whiskey, I can't listen to uh, audiobooks while I'm working. I wish I could, but the, my, the work that I do requires, um, my full ears, uh, be engaged. Uh, so uh, time wise is something I, you know, time is just something I don't have in abundance, uh, because really, honestly, I am as far, I'm either asleep I'm working or I'm doing YouTube stuff. And that's pretty much my life right now. Um, yeah, she, let's see. Uh, let's see. The first light surf, I was two guys pussyfooting around each other with one guy getting cut in half and disappearing. Yeah, well, and there was, I mean, think about it. You had Alec Guinness and John, uh, David Prowse. Neither of them knew anything about holding a sword. 
the costume for Vader was incredibly awkward and Alec Guinness was very old. And they just kind of handed them the swords and say, okay, swing at each other. It was not a choreographed fight. Um, you know, we got a little bit, you know, the first real choreographed fight we got was Empire. And even then, they didn't really work out any kind of real style to it other than Vader is just more aggressive. Um, in Return of the Jedi, that fight was great. That same kind of thing. It wasn't very well choreographed. Um, Austin throws a couple of bucks into the Super Chat. Thank you so much, Austin. Despite my being such a jerk to you guys, you throw me a couple of bucks anyway, and I really appreciate it. You want to see number six because Luke is your favorite hero. Here he comes. <laughs> Um, Captain George says, I, I understand your point of view. For the most part, it's completely true. I personally like doing all the canon stuff and making stuff on it. And that's cool. And I, and I'm all right with that. That's just not something you're ever going to get me into. And, you know, I, and, and there are some great channels that like, if you're into the EU stuff in particular, check out, and, and granted, you probably all are already subscribed to him, but check out channels like Eckhart's Ladder. He does all this EU stuff. And I'll tell you, every now and then Eckhart does a video about real canon stuff. And when he does, I really like it. When he does EU stuff, I'm like, okay, he's getting into the Interdictor Cruiser thing again and all that. And you know what? Guess what? Newsflash, Interdictor Cruisers don't exist in film. You know, so there has never been an Interdictor Cruiser showing up in film causing gravity wells or anything like that. And it's like whenever we talk about Star Trek versus Star Wars and you start getting, well, the Empire actually has 250,000 Star Destroyers and they have 75,000 Interdictor Cruisers. It's like, no, they don't. That's, you never see that on screen. And if you're going to base it, you, if you have to, if you, if you, you have to draw the line somewhere that you can be objective. And the only thing you can really be objective about is what you actually see. Um, Josh Street says, I'm only being a jerk since Lore stole all my beer. <laughs> now, Lore didn't steal my beer. He, st he stole my technical difficulties screen. That's what he stole. Ah, what a jerk. Um, Interdictor is canon in Rebels. Okay, well, I haven't seen that, but fair enough. Um, but I haven't seen it in any films, and that's all I said, is that you don't see it in any of the films. Um... You know, you could argue that for, and, and this is where, if, if you think about when you look at films versus TV shows that are in the same universe, I think Marvel does this well, and I would kind of, and the problem is I think Star Wars fans, and don't get me wrong, I love you guys, and I know most of you guys are Star Wars fans uh, as much as any of you are Star Trek fans, um, but if you, uh, if you start crossing lines back and forth with canon it gets kind of a mess marvel's very good about this with marvel notice that even in infinity war there's no mention of the defenders right now you would think that tony stark if there's some guy that lives in harlem that's invincible you'd think that would be pretty useful when there's uh this mega godlike being that's about to come and show up um uh, but they don't do that. Instead, they set the defenders in the in the Marvel universe, but they don't cross back and forth. Um, same thing as far as um, you know. I think that Rebels and Clone Wars that can be fun supplemental things to Star Wars, but they shouldn't you know try to go back and forth with it. Now, if they eventually bring Interdictor cruisers into the films, that's fine. I'm I'm okay with that, but. As far as I'm concerned, you know, if I'm comparing film franchise to film franchise in Star Wars, the only thing we've really seen is capital ships and fighters. People talk about all the support ships and all the destroyers and all this other, you know, all these other ships, but they have not shown them on screen. And so, and granted, I know a lot of them appear in Rebels or uh, Clone Wars or whatever, but we, but on the films, we haven't seen it. And if you're trying to compare 
you know, especially since it's a popular thing for us nerds to do to say, well, who would win in a fight? Well, you have to go with what you can objectively compare and you can only objectively compare what you see on the screen. And what, and so, uh, if you're seeing well, this is a kid's show that was supplemental to it. Well, does that mean that what we saw in the holiday special is canon? Uh, does it mean that, uh, you know, and, and what about when you start showing up with inconsistencies between the shows and the, uh, the films, which there are some things there. I know Laura Reloaded has actually talked about a little bit of it. Um, anyway. Ah, uh, we're good. We're just getting into it tonight. Um, and don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying Rebels is a bad show. If you like Rebels, awesome. I just haven't seen it. Uh, Sci-Fi says, Dan says, did Ryan Johnson overuse comedy to compensate for the lack of plot and character development? No, I think he overused comedy because he doesn't know how to write. And he doesn't understand the, the Star Wars characters. If you understand the characters, you can bring in laugh moments without making them stupid and cringeworthy. And that was a big problem um, because of the fact that, you know, if you look at the MCU, if you look at Infinity War, there are some hilarious moments in Infinity War. Every single one of them felt like a natural thing that that character would say. In Star Wars, it just felt like, hey guys, here's a joke for you. And it just, that doesn't work. Um... Antitrekker has said that he would take a hand phaser over a lightsaber. As far as in combat, absolutely. A hand phaser would be more effective than a lightsaber. Star Trek animated series is canon. And, well, it's uh, some people argue that it is. Some people argue that it isn't. I've never used the animated series in an argument <laughs> as far as between Star Trek and Star Wars because there are some things in the animated series that are a little out there. Have you had a chance to watch The Expanse? No, my friend. I have been working and doing YouTube stuff, and that's pretty much all I've been doing since the last time you asked me that. Uh, Mr. Riles asks, uh -oh, what are you we should just appoint King of Nerds to decide what is and what isn't canon. Well, there you go. Well, I, I nominate uh, me. <laughs> Ricky says, phasers over lightsabers any day. Put a phaser on wide setting, lightsaber has no chance. You're absolutely right. Um, and phaser also, unlike blasters, is a continuous beam, uh, particularly if you're talking about anything other than in the JJ verse, uh, it's a continuous beam of energy, which means that all you have to do is get two guys with phasers and you can take down a Jedi, no problem, because they can't go G -g 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 to deflect them, because you have to keep your lightsaber in place to deflect the continuous beam, and then somebody just has to hit you from another angle and you're dead. Bam. Uh, demonetize, yes. <laughs> I, uh, YouTube does love to demonetize me, and I don't know why. They just hate me. Um, Star Trek, the animated series, contradict. Yeah, there's, well, Star Trek has got a lot of continuity problems over the years. And you really, I mean, that's, that's a real issue as far as trying to compare, uh, it's the the two that's the adv one advantage that star wars has if you stay focused on the films is that based on the films there have only been uh nine films well 10 now is solo right yeah 10 now is solo uh so 10 films to come out so it's much easier to maintain some continuity though even though ryan johnson saw to it that we would break that in several key ways but the um uh, but at least there's a more consistency. But with Star Trek, you have all the different television shows, you have all the different films, and you have uh, so many different people that wrote uh, various stories for it. So it makes it virtually impossible to, uh, to be 100% consistent with canon. And so unfortunately... There are some uh, there are some problems. By the way, you never picked a number for the uh, uh, Austin. I don't. Oh yeah, you did. Never mind. I'm losing my mind. You picked number six. We played that. I'm just going crazy today. I tried to watch Star Trek animation, but it was super cheesy. Um, uh, there are some episodes of the animated series that are actually really really good. Um, I'm I'm losing it. I can't remember the name of the episode, but the one where Spock visits himself as a child. Uh, was actually really good. 
Um, and there's, uh, but the problem is, is that, yeah, there's some stuff that is really cheesy and there's some stuff that is way out there in terms of what's going on there. Um, Westworld is just as good as The Expanse. My two favorite shows right now, Westworld touches on the sentient Android issue pretty well. Both shows are produced pretty well. I really liked Westworld season one. I haven't watched season two yet, but, uh, yeah. There are 11 Star Wars movies. Uh, 10 was solo, 11 with episode nine. Well, episode nine has not come out. I'm only counting films that have actually come out. And Holiday Special was not a film. So, there are 10. Aha! I am right on that one. Take that, you nerds. Um, my biggest problem with Star Trek, why are all the ships filled with rockets that randomly spill everywhere in battle? With rocks that randomly spill everywhere in battle. Rocks? What are you talking about? I, I, you lost me there. Um, whiskey and Comics is taken off. You have a wonderful night, my friend. Take care of yourself. The Ewok Adventure, yeah, that's... Uh, do you count the two Ewok? No, they were made for television. Um, so, no, I don't count the Ewok movies. Uh, the Expanse's first season is tediously slow, but don't give up to season two. It's definitely... Well, actually, I like what I've seen so far the first few episodes. So I am looking forward to it. It's just a matter of getting the time, honestly. That's all it is. Um, well, Mr. Carpetbagger, around here we have something called the Missouri Boat Ride. Okay. Um, I'm sure that's a quote from something. Uh, let's see. Captain George is pointing out, yes, we have episodes 1 through 8, Rogue One, and Solo. So a total of 10. Clone Wars animated movie, so 11. Um, Clone Wars animated movie was a cheap cash grab by Lucas where they just took the first couple episodes of Clone Wars and released it in theaters. I'm not going to count that. I'm sorry. Um, if you, if you want to count it, you can, but I'm not. I didn't see it. And I, I thought that it was it was the very definition of a cash grab. Um, Outlaw Josie Wales. That was a good movie. Um, Emergency Command Hologram. That was actually kind of a cool idea. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah, as far as the, the uh, Clone Wars having a th theatrical release. Yeah, but like I said, all it was was the first few episodes of the animated series that they just decided to make into a movie because George Lucas was acting like, oh, it's so much better than we thought it would be, so we thought we'd make it into a movie. Now, you just thought you could get some extra bucks out of it because it has the Star Wars name on it. Uh, but the animation, I mean, the trailers for it, I saw the animation, I was like, how is this a movie? This barely looks good enough for television. And sure enough, that's all it was. Uh, Enderman of Doom says, have you, uh, have you not seen every Star Trek ship battle? The ship always has random rocks flying everywhere when it's hit. Why? Uh, I think you're confusing rocks with just miscellaneous debris. It's supposed to be like metallic chips and stuff like that. They're not really rocks. Um, uh, wow, Lucas really cut and pasted the first episodes and made it into a movie. Really? Yes. That's uh, that's exactly what it was. And uh, the, the they basically were starting the, the Clone Wars series uh the television series and i saw an interview with lucas where he's like he basically said that from his perspective in the interview he was saying well we realized that this was so much better than a television series that we just had to release it as a movie so they took the first four episodes of this kid's show cut them together and it became the clone wars movie and uh quite frankly uh i didn't care. Uh, so your PayPal is asking, uh, your pay owl is where, who wins in a fight? Q versus Ray. One for Q, two versus for Ray. And everybody's voting for Ray. Um, but that's only because of the fact that Ray is a Mary Sue. Uh, can we take seven, uh, episodes seven, eight and so and bury them with the ET Atari game? I would love to, but unfortunately, you know, and that's the thing. While, while Clone Wars, I will I will dismiss simply because of the fact that it was just a cash grab based on a TV show. Um, unfortunately, Episodes 7, 8, and Solo are canon. 
and I have to deal with that. Just like as a Star Trek fan, I have to deal with the fact that Star Trek V exists. I have to deal with all the next generation films existing. So, yeah, there is that. All right, guys, we're going to be wrapping it up here in a couple of minutes. But uh, before I do, I want to say, first of all, we had a great spirited conversation. And I love the fact that we can completely disagree on some of these topics, but not be jerks about it and not, uh, you know, not start hating on each other. So for that, thank you all. You guys are the best. You really honestly are the best audience anybody could ask for on YouTube. Uh, which was worse, Star Trek Five or Threshold? <sighs> I don't know. They're not really compatible because one's a TV episode and one's a movie. So I, I, that's my, I mean, it depends on my mood. Uh, they're both really, really bad. Um, right now, I guess I would say threshold, but they're both really, really bad. Anyway, um, but I do want to say thank you to all of you guys for, for putting up with me, even when I am a jerk. Um, and uh, because, you know, sometimes I get ornery. Sometimes we fight, you know, and, and I know a lot of you guys care about the the, the different uh, fighting styles of the Jedi and stuff. And that's cool, but it's just not a thing that I care about. <laughs> and and, I, and I've got to be honest with you, because if I'm not honest and I'm not being true to myself, then... I'm not true to what the whole purpose of this channel is. I am not. I never want to be a channel where you watch it and you just know that somebody else is writing a script for me. Everything I say on this is what I believe. And so thank you guys for putting up with me. And no, I did not say I said, what, what, Mr. Miles? What? 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 Where did that come from? <sighs> anyway. But, yo, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you guys are uh, understand that and put up with me. Anyway, you guys take care of yourselves and have an absolutely wonderful night. Uh, remember, Saturdays is the day that is reserved for Mrs. Anti-Trekker, so I will not be online at all tomorrow. Uh, however, Sunday we will be doing a live stream and talking about something. <laughs> so, take care. the anti-trucker we will return to your scheduled programming shortly or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties <laughs>